Sutton Foster became a Broadway star overnight in the Broadway musical Thoroughly Modern Millie. Since then, she's become a favorite in shows like Shrek, Little Women, Young Frankenstein, and The Drowsy Chaperone. Next, she'll be seen as Reno Sweeney in Anything Goes, and I'm thrilled to welcome her here today. Welcome, Sutton. Thank you. Hi. How are you? I'm great. I'm good. Happy New Year. Is it too Happy late New to Year. say Happy New Year? Is it no, still? No. My Christmas tree's still up. So, yeah, <laughs> Happy New Year's totally still appropriate. When, when does that come down? I don't Valentine's know. Day? I think I might wait until the end of January because I have a, I have, <laughs> so weird. I have book, I have a book club, and my book club is meeting on the 24th of January, and I want them to see my tree. What's your book club like? My book club is a bunch of awesome women. It's all women, and then guys get really jealous, and they're yeah. like, well, I want to be in your book club. I'm like, it's all girls. You can create your own all male book club. We meet almost every six weeks and we we read the book, we discuss the book, we drink a lot of wine and eat delicious food and we talk and it's awesome. It's really cool. So this is obviously top secret exclusive news, but what book is being discussed oh, this well, month? The book, the book that we're reading right now is um, a book called The Lonely Polygamist. That's a very so, man book though for a bunch of girls we're I talking guess, about. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of this is so weird, but I'm a big fan of like Big Love. I love that show. And so like polygamy it sounds so strange. I was like, well, this sounds interesting. I'm really and into polygamy. I'm real I'm really into polyg yeah, wait. <laughs> More exclusive news. I know, yeah. <laughs> but um no, it was just interesting. I just find it found it interesting. So it's it's um it's good. It's good. So you've had a few months off since trust. I know you originally when you got finished with Shrek, you didn't even know you were going to be doing Trust, so you no, thought you had a no. lot more time off. Yeah, as soon as Shrek ended, which was a year ago, I was sort of planning on taking a year off, which I didn't do at all. Um, but uh, And I've been doing concerts as well, so I've been doing concerts all around the country. So, yeah, I've, had, I've just been traveling and teaching, too, because right. I teach it. I taught at NYU um, uh, last semester. So that, I want to talk about that. Did you do it at Tisch? Yes, I taught 66 freshmen in four different classes, um, so wow. it was 16 kids per class, and uh, it was it was awesome. And it was intense, song, but song awesome. Performance. Song performance, yeah. And then I also taught a cabaret class, okay. um, which was a different different class, and I had ten, 10 students, and then we they put on a show at Joe's Pub in December. And yeah. you seem to really love it. It's been life changing. It's changed. It's I just absolutely love it. So I hope to continue to. Um, when my schedule allows it to be able to continue to, to work there and teach there. So you're about to start rehearsals in a, in a week or two for Anything Goes. Yep. I just walked by the marquee today. I hadn't seen it. So I, was, I turned down 43rd Street, and I was like, uh-oh, <laughs> there it is. Oh, my God, it's happening. And, um, yeah, I start, I start on the 25th. We start rehearsals. What, what attracted you to this show? I worked at a children's theater, actually, when... Um, when I was around 19, after I left college, I moved to Memphis. My parents were living there. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, and I was very lost. And I ended up walking down the street to this community theater and knocking on the door and asking if they um, needed any help. And it was a, a community children's theater, Germantown Children's Theater in Germantown, Tennessee. And they did a production of Anything Goes. And that's like my only, my only um, real connection to it growing up. Um, although I was... a Obsessed with like uh, Patty's Patty's version of it, like the the CD Pat and it, Patty Lapone, yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I was obsessed with her version and at the Lincoln Center, the last revival, and, and the CD. You didn't see it. You I saw didn't it on see the Tony it. Awards I saw the from, Tony Awards. Yeah, the YouTube clip. Yeah, I yeah. know. Which I watched again. I'm like, okay. Um, <laughs> and uh, and so I just I always thought Reno was always a, a dream role, you know, and um, and the show and the music and. Um, I, I'm still, I still kind of can't believe it's happening, and it's going to have to start. I'm going to get into rehearsals very soon, and uh, and it's all going to be happening very soon. But I'm really excited. Now you weren't in that Tennessee. Anything goes. You're talking about. No, I was. About. I was. I choreographed it. Really? I did. <laughs> do you have any? Do you have any tips for Kathleen Marshall? Or? No, I was terrible. I didn't know what I was doing. I've never, never choreographed anything in my life. I was 19 years old. They're like, we need a choreographer. I was like, I can do it. I didn't know anything. Well, that Pretty means red, you know this show inside out, it. though. I mean, sort of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that was a long time ago. That was 16 years ago. So, but, um, but yeah, yeah. I remember making Reno do a bunch of crazy stuff. That's the only thing I remember. I remember her. I remember making a lot of people lift her up and like <laughs> flip her around and stuff. That was that was about it. 
when you are preparing, when you know that you're going into rehearsals for a role, do you do any preparation? Re I mean, do you YouTube and look for, look for sort you of... You know what's, what's interesting is that this is my first... Except for Anyone Can Whistle, which I did. It's your first revival. My first big revival. Which I want to talk to you about, which is I incredible. Know. I know. Yeah. It's incredible so, that someone who's been on Broadway as long as you hasn't, you know, since Millie, you haven't done a revival. No, You've done only and new so words. it's tricky because I, I don't want to be naive, the fact that these incredible people have played this part before right. me. But I also, and I, I also am not, I, there, if I try to be Patti Lapone, I will fail miserably because I, who can... Who could, she, there's only one, but there's also only one me, so I'm, I'm trying to go in with it with a really open mind. What do you think is the biggest challenge for you in playing Reno Sweeney? Well, you know, at first, at first I thought, in a weird way, my biggest challenge before was the idea of playing sort of like a, um, you know, she's like a sexy kind of sensual sort of broad, you know, yeah. who, who is like, and I, that, that was something that made me nervous, but in, in many ways I feel like the things that I did this last year with, with um, Anyone Can Whistle and even with Trust, yeah. which is bizarre, has sort of, I've, now I feel like I can, I kind of tap into. We can into, all picture you as a whore now. She's not Sorry. a whore. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but but an S&M part, we know Sweeney's know, nothing know. compared to no, seeing you. No, no, but that's so true. I know, full dominatrix. The, the I know, I know, I know, I know. It's so different. But like after I did that, now I'm like, I feel like I can do anything, which is cool. So you had Reno Sweeney in your head. Yeah. As, as sort of a role that you would like to do one yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Are there any other classic roles? Um, Baker's Wife in End of the Woods. Yeah. Uh, that's... Just because I'm and have you um, ever done that anywhere? Never done it. Love that show so much. Um, someday I'd love to do Mama Rose, but that's down the road. We'll get to that. Okay, <laughs> someday. Uh, that's that's about it. Oh, and I would love to. I've played the part before, but I would love to do it again. Is um, my favorite show ever is Me and My Girl. So I would love to do. Yeah, that's right. You uh, did that. I did that at Pittsburgh Civic Light Opera, but I'd love to do Sally. Sally, right? Sally. Yeah. I'd love to do to do her again. Okay, here's a hard question, but I want you to try to come up with an answer. Let's say there was a time capsule, and you had to put one performance in it of yours, so that people like 100 years from now could open up and know what Sutton Foster was and as a talent. What 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 performance would you stick in a time capsule? I've never asked anybody this, but I just thought of it. I'd probably put Millie in there. Yeah. Yeah. Why Millie? Um, because I think it represents a lot. I think it was probably my. I mean, I, I sort of look back on that time, that time in my life, and it was, um, I mean, everything sort of changed. That, that, that role, like, changed my life, my career. And I think I was, it was probably my bravest, uh, most, you know, out there thing I've ever done. So uh, you, You've said before that it was sort of a terrifying time for you. It was terrifying. I, was, I don't remember a lot of it, so I actually it would be nice to have it in a capsule because then I could go back and watch and go, oh, wow, look. <laughs> um, but uh, I probably would put that in there, yeah. I mean, you know, my favorite, I, you know, I think about Drowsy a lot, but I think I, think I would probably put Millie. That would probably, that would probably describe me the most, I guess. It's like right. iconic, I guess. So I want to have a little bit of fun now with, with photos. There are a lot of really um, funny photos of you online that I love, and I want to show people some of them because I think that people deserve to see them. <laughs> so, so let's look at the first photo, shall we? Oh, God, okay. Now, tell me, that, now this, this, <laughs> come on, this is adorable. Okay, I'm 10, this, is, this was Annie when I was 10 years old. The funny, the, the most horrifying thing about this photo is that the, they didn't have a red wig, so the wig I'm wearing is actually gray. It was a gray, curly wig, so they but they shot it in photo. black and white. Okay, I'm 10. It's the Augusta, Augusta um, Community Theater in Augusta, Georgia. And I had the, the biggest Southern accent you've ever heard. So I, they, we, and so I, I was, I talked like this and I said, um, Annie, Annie at the Augusta Community Theater, October 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th. Sandy and I will be looking for you. You did a commercial. I for did a commercial. A for radio it spot. Too. I did a radio <laughs> spot. Yeah, but I'm that sub. It's bad. So I was. I must tomorrow. I mean, it's like the most southern thing you've ever seen in the world. Was yeah. that a big break for you? Big break. It was all downhill from there. Actually, it was all like, I became like a a 
monster after that show because I was <laughs> anyone so. well anyone who wanted to hear me sing I was like you want to hear me sing and I would just sing <laughs> I would terrorize everyone because I didn't know I could sing until that and then it was all over <laughs> okay awesome oh god let's look at another this one this is terrifying okay oh yes now, the classic two shot now this this sort of confirms the the rumor that there is a twin somewhere <laughs> out there it's not just your brother there's another Tul <laughs> tulip <laughs> tulip tulip foster tulip foster we don't talk about her much where is she <laughs> um yeah the classic, you are. the classic uh i just think my teeth turned out pretty good thank god look at those things yeah. let's do another one because i'm enjoying this oh yes this is good times is this high school this what is it? this would be high school this is um our production of you can't take it with you ah okay so i couldn't figure out what show that could possibly be this is backstage there's a ballerina in that I guess sure. I, don't know it well. <laughs> I can't even remember. Are you picking her nose? Yeah, when in doubt. You know, whenever everyone says do a silly picture, I always either pick my own or pick someone else's nose. That's the only play I've ever done until I did Trust. I've done You Can't Take It With You. <laughs> I don't think I told anybody that. I've done You Can't Take It With You in high school, as you can see, uh, right. with my spray, silver spray, you know, yep. and my age makeup yep. and Trust off Broadway. It's only did you, two did plays you tell I've ever done in my life. Did you no. tell at your audition, I've done one play before. <laughs> and it was in high school. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't tell him that information, but yeah. yeah All right, awesome. Good times. What's next? Oh, my God. Isn't this fun? Yeah, sure. <laughs> this is hilarious. Oh, wow. Yeah, now this, this is... Now, is, this is like your like first professional job, it's right? It's Will Rogers Follies. That's you as a Ziegfeld showgirl. Yep. Yep. I was 17 years old. I don't know how, why the hell they cast me, but they did. And um, I could barely, you know, Will Rogers takes place on all these stairs. I could barely walk down the stairs. I was, I, I'd never even really worn heels before. Um, but they hired me. Look at you in the big glamorous gowns. I know. I was the... in like, I was like half naked the whole time. Yep. 17. I grew up very, very, very fast. And all those other girls were much older than you, I'm assuming. Much older than me. Did they corrupt you at all? They tried. I was still pretty, you know, like virginal throughout the whole the whole experience. But I would pull out my like Sweet Valley High book, and I'm like, oh. remember how old I am, everybody? I know, totally. I was like, I was reading Sweet Valley High in like Teen Magazine, <laughs> and they were not. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Next. Oh my God. Oh God. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's prom. Now, one thing I love about this photo is that your dress looks like a thoroughly modern Millie. It's the red. Did you know you looked good in red? from the beginning, it's very Millie. It's hilarious, Which, yeah. is this junior or senior prom? This would be junior prom. Who's That's the boy? Jim Daly, who's now like an agent. He lives in New York City, we're friends, he's awesome. He killed me when I put this on Facebook. And um, I just love the sensible flats yes. and the bended knee because I was taller than him. So I'm trying to stay You're a little, respectful. I'm being respectful. Do, I was, you, do you have that problem a lot in dating that you have to have guys that can sort of? I guess, I'm 5'9", and I was 5'9 at age 14, and so I, was always taller than everyone. I just also love the like ficus tree on the side yeah, here this, and it, the it's, balloons. It's a whole thing. I love the balloon string, the clump of string on the bottom. It's yeah, very Yeah, and the sensible bang. <laughs> I don't, there's so much that's not right. Yeah. All right, what else do we have? Oh, that's me and my brother. That is you and your brother in Greece together. Greece. I was is Patty that, Simcox. He was Danny Zuko. And this was where? That's. Augusta Community Theater, and I'm probably like 12 years old. Wow. Yeah, and and he was the senior, you know, cool guy, and I was the annoying little sister. But you guys were both in Greece together on Broadway. We were. You were in the company at the same time. Yeah, we were. I, I, I he was playing Roger, and I played Sandy. I came in as a replacement for a couple of weeks. That's, I mean, my Broadway debut in the revival with the one with Rosie O'Donnell and that one yeah. back in the 90s. The 90s. God, I can't believe we're saying that. Now that we're in the 11s. But um, yeah, that's me and my brother. Long, 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 long time ago. Yeah, we did shows together growing up, like community theater and stuff. But we're five years, almost six years apart, so um, we didn't overlap too much. But yeah. You've never played Danny and Sandy opposite each other? No, 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 no. He was the understudy for Danny. And they asked me, they were like, now if there was an emergency and your brother had to go on as for Danny, I was will like, will you make out with your brother? Well, yeah, will you break out, make out with your brother? And I'm like, absolutely not. Like. I can't, for A, I can't believe you're asking me this. Was that the moment Broadway corrupted you? Yeah, right? And I was like, hmm. <laughs> but don't you think the audience would be uncomfortable? It's a little awkward. It's a, lo a lot awkward. <laughs> it's a lot awkward. Yeah, no. No, no, no. Oh, 
No. I don't even know what that is. This photo, the reason why I'm showing you this photo is because that is the first photo that Bruce Glickus of <gasps> Broadway.com ever took of you. You're kidding! And we've taken a bazillion photos of you since. That was at the Mamma Mia opening. Oh my God, that was my first. You was like your first red carpet moment, right? That is hilarious. You were prepping for Thoroughly Modern Millie. Yeah, they, they put me in like a fancy dress and then they made, and I didn't know what to do. And it was the opening night of Mamma Mia. That's hilarious. Look at my hair. What do you remember about, about you, you then and you now? What's, what's, what's that girl like compared to you now? Very similar, actually. <laughs> um, better hair, I think. Better hair, yeah, I have much better hair. Well, that was before anything ever, that was like before anything. So I don't know. I mean, I'm very similar. I guess I just, I'm a little more tired. I don't know. It's weird. Thank you for, for suffering through the photos from your past. Oh, no, I like photos from um, my past. So you were in trust, and you, it, was your it was your first place since high school, as you said. And um, I can't believe I... <laughs> you got very good reviews. I and, did? And you know that, yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't read your reviews. No, I stay away from everything. Do you see yourself um, doing more dramatic? Or do you want to do that again? I'd love to. It, it was such an amazing experience. Um, I, would, I would love to do more dramatic roles, more plays. I, I just want to do things that excite me, whatever that means. Did you become close to the cast of Trust? We did. The four of us got very, very close. Do any of you stay in touch? <laughs> we all stay in touch. I'm very happy to hear that. It's good. <laughs> me too. Theater families. Theater families. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, and you also have your CD coming out I want to talk about. Your live CD. <gasps> yes. Right? Oh my god, I'm so you, glad you, you know that. You did a show at Cafe Carlisle. I did. I did. Um, we. Over the summer, we did um, two weeks at the Carlisle, and we recorded it, and we're going to release it sometime in the spring. And so I'm just doing all the final finalization of it and right now. And you sing all those crazy, belty I diva do. songs. You sing Define Gravity. Define Gravity's on it, and uh, and I'm telling you, I'm not going on there. We put it as a bonus track. Crazy. I love it. Yeah. Because, you know, it's my only opportunity to ever sing that song, so. Well, I can't wait to blare them, blast them <laughs> play those tracks it's over fun. and over. It's fun. It's cool. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you I for can't wait to see you and anything goes. Thank you. I hope you'll Paul. come back soon. Of course I will. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.